overview of grant accounting setup steps. So I've compiled a exhaustive document that uh, lists down the setup steps for setting up and implementing Oracle Grants Accounting. So um, let's go to that document and have a discussion there. So to start with, as you could see, Grants Accounting Setup Checklist. This is the document I've compiled and it lists on all the setups across uh, seven or eight modules in Oracle applications that you've got to set it up as a part of grounds accounting setup and implementation but I'm not going to go into the details of each of these steps and we can quickly run through them as you could see the setup steps also detail the step type whether it's optional or required or um, uh, required with some defaults or something else has to be done along with the ownership of the Oracle applications module name. As you could see um, the modules includes like system administration, general ledger, payables, purchasing, receivables, or management, assets, HRMS, projects, grants accounting, and sub ledger accounting and Oracle workflow. So I'm going to highlight an overview of certain steps but as you could see the majority of the setup steps includes Oracle projects and I'm not going to go into the details of that and if you wish to learn more about that you can either take my course on project caustic fundamentals Alternatively, you can refer the project's implementation guide or user guides for more details. What I am going to highlight is the steps pertaining to grants accounting and that to the important steps, not all of them. So you've got to basically refer to the user guide and implementation guides as to individual steps pertaining to the ones that are listed here. But these are most of the steps. They're not all, I believe, but they are most of them. And I've listed down as far as my knowledge goes. So let's start with the first one, define responsibilities. It's an optional step. And if you are doing a customer implementation, you got to define this. So what I'm gonna do, step by step, the one I am describing, I'm gonna take you through Oracle applications and quickly show you the navigation and form, but we'll not go into the details of that just for that a purpose of time because it's too exhaustive to cover everything in this particular lesson and in this particular module as i said the setup is spread across several modules so first i'm going to log out and re-log in once more And then as you could see the first steps pertains to system administration so i'm gonna simply navigate down to system administrator progress snl in this responsibility you've got to navigate to i believe security responsibility and then define And from here you've got to basically start by re defining the responsibility name the application it belongs responsibility key and then you've got to attach things like data group the menu and as such the responsibility is not just defined like this it's got a menu attached to it and based on your business requirement you've got to customize the menu so you've got to separately define the menu the underlying forms and functions within that and each of them gets defined separately 
and if you wish the navigation is over here security responsibility and let's see as far as the menu goes you've got this menu option you've got to use and then you you within menu you've got forms and functions so this is function and then you've got to define a form and I believe the form has to be defined via application developer responsibility you see this one okay so that's how you go about defining a new responsibility let's move on and here you've got site level and application level profile options and uh, you know what grants accounting have got a number of profile options which are exclusive to grant accounting but they also share a number of um, system profile options at uh, the system administrator level and um, at the other level for example things like the operating unit the ledger details and so on defined at MO operating unit or GL ledger and so on likewise the grants accounting system profile option starts with GMS I believe but um, you've got to assign these to the site level which means that it's applicable to all the responsibilities and application level means specific to the grants accounting or specific application the navigation for defining the profile options values as in system administrator responsibility so go here system administrator progress SNL and then you navigate to profile and then system okay and uh, here you can choose the profile you wish to set and let's say if you've got GMS related profiles you see these are all grants accounting related profile or grants management system which stands for like GMS and here you can see a number of profiles that you've got to set it up if you wish to know more about the details of this profile options you've got to refer to the user guide and implementation manuals for grants management all right so that's how you go about setting up the system profile options and the levels site levels and application level is this one you see the first one is the site level and the second one this column is application level you can also set up the system profile app options further at responsibility user or server level and so on okay now let's go back then you've got define a ledger assign a calendar functional currency and accounting structure to the ledger as such this is a basic fundamental setup that you have to do while you are implementing Oracle applications so this setup belongs to your functional finance structure wherein you've got to define a ledger and then define and assign a calendar to that ledger and assign functional currency and accounting structure and all that is done as a part of the general ledger module implementation so I'm going to quickly show you um, the navigation for defining this so if you go on here in Oracle applications and let's close this form and then you switch the responsibility to say general ledger super user progress SNL and hit the OK button and in this one if you go to setup and then you go to financials accounting setup manager and accounting setup so within this one you can define a new ledger and assign options like the functional currency the calendar legal entity and so on and within this one itself you see as you could see here you can start by clicking this particular um, button create accounting setup which is going to take you through a wizard wherein uh, it's gonna ask you to set up each of uh, the entities one by one including legal entities and um, things like uh, assigning legal entities to ledgers and then the ledger definition itself but if to 
wish to see the existing details of the ledger you can see it over here say progress master is one of the ledger say okay let's see and in this one say progress state and local that's the ledger and as you could see this is the primary ledger you click on update accounting options and here you can see the definition of this particular ledger and you see this is the legal entity and the primary ledger definition is over here so if you wish to see legal entity information you can always click on this particular um, pencil icon to update them but if you wish to just see the details you can view details by clicking on this icon so let's have a look at uh, the ledger definition wherein you attach the calendar currency and so on so you see that while you're defining the ledger this where you've got to give this currency this is a functional ledger currency and then you've got to attach the chart of account structure and the accounting calendar okay and this calendar and structure have to be predefined before you can assign them so those are all the separate set of steps that you've got to do before you define your ledger and then there is a place to assign the legal entity as well but prior to that you've got to define those legal entities and again you can do it on this form itself by going to legal entities tab and here you see you've got create legal entity button over here and via that one you can define a new legal entity I'm not going to go into the details of this particular form but a legal entity is nothing but the definition of the company uh, which operates under a specific uh, country's jurisdiction and those details you've got to define it over here okay now I'm going to go back to this uh, document and then you've got defined payables financial options again this is a dependent setup so the first certain uh, setup steps are pertaining to fundamental structure of Oracle applications uh, the functional side in the front end such as responsibility defi definition system options and then you are defining your general ledger then once you define your accounting structure and general ledger then you can move on to sub ledgers such as payables purchasing uh, receivables order management assets and so on so you see payables is one of the sub ledgers and you start by defining the payables financial options but it's not just the financial option but there are a whole lot of other payable setup steps that you have got to do but majorly i have highlighted the financial options so if you go to payables responsibility payables manager progress snl hit the ok button and if you go to setup and uh, let's see if you've got okay these are accounting setup so if you go to setup then options and then here you've got financial options and you also have other options such as payable options payable system setup uh, user operating unit preferences so these are the things that you've got to also set it up so if you go back it's referring to define payables financial options which is the first one if you click on open it's going to open a form wherein you have to choose the operating unit again this operating unit has to be predefined as a part of the system structure setup wherein you have defined your legal entity then um, define your ledger assign the legal entity to ledger and while you're doing that you also um, define your chart of account structure and then you've got to define your operating units inventory organization 
and so on so once you have got all that defined you can use those operating units over here as a part of your tables implementation and here there are several options in terms of uh, GL accounts your supplier your encumbrance your tax related setup and human resources so all that you've got to do um, before you proceed ahead and once you do this then you've got to also set up other things like uh, payable system setup payables options and so on okay now I'm not going to go into the details of this because these are payable specific setups and if you wish you can either take my course raise 12 i oracle payables fundamentals course wherein i've explained this is much more detail alternatively you can refer to the payables user guide and implementation manual for further details and lengthy reading okay now let's go back here you've got defined purchasing options so once you've defined and implemented your payables then it's time to move on to another sub ledger purchasing and payables and purchasing are highly connected modules so for your purchasing options you define it via your purchasing responsibility so go to purchasing super user progress SNL and then you move on down to set up organizations and then you have got purchasing options you see it may open a HTML based uh, UI form you see it's loading And this is where you see you define all your tables related options so basically the key details of tables implementation but they're not all they're just the starting point but you've got to define a whole lot of other details in terms of uh, your purchasing setup in this form uh, it includes certain uh, setups related to uh, payables like something with ties up with payables and certain things that ties up with general ledger such as your accounts that you have set up as a part of your ledger setup and implementation okay now you have to explore this and implement this uh, prior to implementation of grants uh, accounting module okay so let's go back then you've got purchasing financial options so what we have seen is purchasing options and here you've got purchasing financial options so if you click on this hit the open button choose operating unit and here you go it's pretty much similar to what we have seen in your payables options okay then you've got defined customers so once the payables purchasing um, sub ledgers are set up and implemented then it's time to move on to another sub ledger such as receivables okay so and I'm, these are not all the setup steps for these sub ledgers there are a whole lot of other things that goes into that but I'm just highlighting the key setups that you must do to proceed ahead and while you're doing this you've got to basically set up the entire module anyway now you've got to define the customers so you go to customers in receivables module so if you go into receivables responsibility receivables manager progress SNL hit the OK button and then you go to customers and then create and maintain customers this is the form wherein you can define um, or update existing customers all right then once you're done with uh, receivables setup and implementation then you move on to your auto management setup and implementation wherein one of the key setup is define auto management parameters and this setup is required only when the billing is used in grants accounting implementation wherein you build the customer okay and that will 
or that invoice is generated in receivables module but some of these parameters are used there okay so let's go there to order management let's see if we've got a responsibility over here you see order management super user progress snl click on ok and then you've got to move to setup system parameters and define so these are the system parameters for auto management and these are the values that are already defined and assigned okay and is that what is it is referring to you see set up auto management parameters which is what it is okay and if you move on further you've got uh, set up oracle assets so basically you are not only uh, setting up auto management but also setting up assets module and it's required only when you are defining capital projects because capital project ends in an asset definition and that has to be stored and maintained in Oracle assets in integration with uh, grants accounting Oracle projects modules okay so for fixed assets related implementation you've got to go to the assets responsibility so see if you've got assets you see asset manager progress SNL that's where you've got to go and set up this particular module okay so you see setup alert asset system and then you've got book controls system controls and so on there are many more things that goes into asset implementation I'm gonna go back so I'm visiting certain um, required module setups that I have highlighted with this yellow background once you're done with assets then you've got to set up the locations and this locations are nothing but the addresses and those you potentially use at different places for example at organization level um, or maybe um, while you're setting up internal locations and or internal organizations and so on even the location is used for operating unit setup as well so where do you define it you can either define it in HRMS or in inventory basically the form is shared the same thing holds good with uh, create organization uh, organization hierarchies these are uh, these first three are the ones that can be accessed via inventory module as well okay now let's see whether we've got inventory Alternatively, you can also define them via the HRMS responsibility. So go to Inventory Super User Progress SNL. Hit the OK button. And then you see, in order to define location, you go to Setup, Organizations, and then Locations. So it will open a form space UI and this is where you give your location name and then the associated address details and any other details in terms of what kind of a um, location and address it is okay any other details and then you save it you also specify whether it's a global location or a local location specific to one operating unit or across the operating units and then you attach it to potentially uh, organization definition which you define it over here so you see the next setup step is create organization these organization could be project organizations or inventory organizations or internal organizations okay and then you define it over here so I'm going to take an existing um, organization definition say progress
see you've got progress master so this is nothing but an operating unit you uh, attach that previously defined location over here and then you define the organization parameters so what you have it over here is nothing but the organization parameter for example in a operating unit you attach legal entity parameter and then you go to others to define the parameter values okay so choose those one of the options and then it will open a form and there you define more information okay and you see if it's operating unit then you uh, classify one of the um, one of the values here as operating unit then you go to others and then here you give operating unit information where it is where you have to specify further details of uh, ledger legal entity and so on which is pertaining to this particular operating unit you see which is the primary ledger which is the legal entity and so on okay and that's what is the next step I believe over here so okay so it's just create organization but the organization parameters also comes up while you're defining it organization hierarchy so you define a hierarchy of organization for example at the top comes a business group and then within that you've got um, operating units and how it ties up this is what you define as a hierarchy okay and again it could be done via your inventory setup or you can define via HRMS all right you see here hierarchy can you see that I believe that's the one you possibly use it you see organization hierarchy so this is where you define your organization uh, hierarchy name and then you give one organization and what child organization comes under that you give it over here in terms of subordinate organizations okay then you define jobs and enter employee information and this could be done via HRMS or purchasing these functions are usually shared across HRMS or purchasing responsibilities so if you go to purchasing responsibility purchasing super user progress SNL hit the OK button and then you go to setup and the first thing is jobs so you go to setup personal and define the jobs and then once you define the jobs you can optionally define the positions as well and position hierarchy okay and then you assign these jobs and positions to your employees so this is the employee definition okay so here it's not allowing to define the employees and you've got to navigate to HRMS responsibility so let's see if we have any other HRMS You see super user super HRS MS manager progress SNL and within that you go to people enter and maintain and which is where you define your employees and while you're defining your employees you attach uh, the positions pertaining to that for example let me pull out definition of one employee So let's say this one employee okay so you define your complete employee information over here and then 
you go to assignment and within this one as you could see here is the job that is assigned and here is the position so these were the job and position that uh, I've shown you the navigation purchasing responsibility uh, there you have got to define it and you've got to assign it over here but if you don't have purchasing responsibility you can define them via HRMS responsibility as well alright so that's how you set up your employee then you set up your project so projects is a module or a collection of modules that shares the setup with the grants accounting okay so first you've got to start with uh, project implementation options so if you go to projects responsibility so this is project super user responsibility you go there and uh, you go to project setup In fact, you don't do implementation options where this responsibility. There is another one. I believe it's starting with projects focus SNL. So you go into this responsibility and then you go to setup and then you navigate to system and then implementation options. So if you double click on this one, it's going to open project implementation options form, you see, and which is where you define the entire implementation options related to Oracle projects okay and I'm not gonna go into the details of this because uh, it's just a setup which is shared with uh, grants accounting so if you wish to know more about that then feel free to take my course uh, one of the courses in projects and I've got a number of courses out there covering each and every modules of project management suite then you've got defined project accounting periods so that you do it you see the period type the calendar name this is a calendar you you've got to define it and assign it at system options level and you see here you can see the project accounting periods in this particular operating unit and you've got to define and open it from here and then you set up your grants implementation options and that is done via grants accounting responsibility so if you go here switch the responsibility to grants accounting progress SNL hit the OK button and you go to setup and system and then here you have grants implementation options you hit the open button and this is where you give the implementation related options for grant accounting such as award numbering whether you want a manual award numbering or automatic award numbering and whether that automatic has to be uh, a numeric one or alpha numeric one and then award distribution options remember we have given um, things like uh, funding pattern and which is where the distribution happens automatically so it takes these values from here so you um, when you do your transactions that's where automatic distributions happens so whether you wish to enable automatic award distributions and then the award distribution number so those details you specify over here if I go back here then you define your expenditure categories unit of measure expenditure types and again these are all defined as part of your projects implementation so if I go to your projects module once more go to project progress SNL and here you should have it over here in setup and you see expenditures you see here you've got expenditure categories expenditure type and so on 
so you got to set up all these and I'm not going to go into the details of that and then other uh, project layer setups are optional but it could be uh, conditionally optional for example certain um, things you wish to do in grants accounting um, requires non labor resources or transactional sources or costing rules then you must set it up okay so I have written it for your information so such as define non labor resources define transactional sources define labor costing rules define labor costing overrides then define labor cost multipliers then you have defined cost basis and cost basis type again this is a project led um, setup but it's shared across your grants accounting system as well then burden burden structure burden schedules payment terms all these you define in projects but then shared with grants so assuming that if you are exclusively implementing grants management then you've got to define these as well because these are shared with uh, GMS from projects so you've got to first define in Oracle projects um, before you um, set up grants related setups then uh, certain other um, optional steps define credit types define event types and this is set up billing cycles again it's a part of grants so you know what there are a lot of these related to projects I leave it to you to go through that in fact I'm going to share this document and I'm going to share it in my website in this grants management course you would see one of the tabs as documents tab within where I'm going to attach this for your reference so you feel free to refer and download this particular document and go through this at your leisure but uh, as I said in the starting of the course itself one of the primary uh, requirements of the course and assumptions is that the uh, audience must have set up Oracle projects must have some kind of a knowledge in Oracle projects and only then GMS implementation could be successful all right so I'm going to skip these project related setups and I'm going to jump on to the grants related setup and as you could see here on the right hand side this project related setup I have also written as optional GMS because if you are implementing projects and GMS then these setups are already covered and projects implementation and all you have to do is set up uh, grants management system related additional stuff over here but the base setups are already done okay now exclusive to grants management setups are these wherein this grants accounting uh, module is written very clearly so wherein you've got to uh, set up your award purpose codes um, award terms and conditions award roles and set up reports and they are very easy to set up okay they are more mainly like lookup codes and this is again an optional one but then again you got to have terms and conditions while you're defining award if you recall while we were defining the award in and when we have gone to installment section which is where one of the tabs is terms and condition and this is where it comes up and you use it there so I'm going to quickly show you that so if I'm going to go to awards so I'm going to switch the responsibility to grants accounting progress SNL and uh, you see then you go to your award setup you see this is where it's a purpose code you set it up almost it's like a lookup code okay what's the purpose of the award and then you've got here the terms and conditions so you can categorize your terms and conditions and in the details you can define multiple terms to one category and give the description over here and then you can assign it in your award so I'm gonna to go to award definition as well so if you go to awards and look up one of the awards that we have defined previously so I'm gonna take you to my Excel sheet 
which is where I have stored the demo data so let's say this is the word number and if I'm gonna query this award open it and you see here is the tab for terms and conditions this is where you can choose the category and then within that you can choose the term or condition that you wish to attach okay and then secondly here at the header level you can see the purpose award purpose code which is where it comes from this award purpose code form okay and terms and conditions comes from here so let's go back then you've got uh, set up award roles so you've got to set up award roles so that who is doing what sort of and that is required step and as you could see where you can see that so if you go into this and uh, look for personal and here you see you've got award role where is it coming from it's basically coming from some form wherein you define all these roles where do you define so if you go into the setup and you see here award roles you hit the open button and it's I believe it's also a, a sort of a lookup that you define it over here um, and it's just a list of values that comes up out there in while you're defining the award okay if I go back here then you've got setup report which is optional and then uh, set up billing form set up references again these are the things you define in project uh, module and refer it over here so if I go back to our awards form look it's closing down the form so let's uncheck this I'm gonna give the number over here and uh, require it You see here one of the tabs is the references you see it's coming from some place and which is where it is like predefined what reference it is okay CFDA number document name number or purpose number that you've got it predefined and the value you can give it over here I'm sure it must be sort of a lookup as you could see here awards references open this and you see this is a lookup that you can define any number of reference in relation to award and then you can use it in your award definition okay then if I go back here then you've got set up billing forms so you see here you've got billing forms and in fact if you go to your award definition You see billing formats and you see the billing related details are over here and let's see billing forms if you open this and here you can define your details pertaining to your billing forms in fact they are nothing so basically you give the billing form name description and effective dates it's a simple setup not not much okay I'm gonna close this then set up allowed cost schedules and again that's a required setup and the cost schedules are something that you attach in award definition so if you go back to Oracle ap applications you see here in compliances tab you've got under cost indirect cost schedule over here or allowed cost schedule over here these you've got to predefine it and if you go to the navigator and you see in costing if you go to setup and then you've got uh, 
the costings of menu and within that if you expand in the burden you've got schedules over here so I believe that's the form you can define your burden schedules over here okay and that's what you can use it there then and then you've got setup award types what type of award it is and if you go to award definition you see here you see here you've got something like award types and what type of award it is and again it's sort of a lookup that is coming over here so if you go to your navigator and uh, look for award type I go back here okay so I was uh, referring to the award types hold on let me requery the award once more and let's take one of the award types you see federal agency grant and that you define it here so if you go to setup and then you go to billing you see award types and that's where you define it hit the open button and you see here you see federal agency grants one of the award types that you define it's almost like a lookup that you define it and um, then you have got award templates you set up award templates basically it is to expedite your um, data entry and to standardize the award process so if you define different uh, kind of templates based on the uh, grant organization then it's easier to um, quickly choose the template and default a number of values in your award and basically it expedites the award entry process so where do you define it so if you go into awards oh sorry over here setup awards and then you see award template which is where you define it and then you can either use an existing one or choose the one that is already there so let's say DHHS I'm just using it uh, as a sample for this one um, to demonstrate this template so basically as you could see most of the things in this form are exactly similar to what you see in awards form so if you go to awards form over here awards management you see it's pretty much same you put the header and you put all these tabs so it can all default from this one basically reduce the data entry time plus standardize the different kinds of awards in your organization okay you see and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this and in fact from here you can define a new template as well if you hit the new button and all you have to do is provide the name and number and all the details that you provide in your award entry process so basically once you save all these details you can reuse it while you are creating your award by using this template so if you go uh, in award query find form here you've got um, you've got to search by template how do you want to go about it so you give this particular template let's say the hold on
and again you see what you can also control the security of that template you see it's accessible to operating unit so progress master so you see if you use Fertile Grant, that's one of the templates. Hit a find button. And then you can use the copy to function to leverage this template and copy to a new award. Okay, so that's the advantage of a template, and all the values from the template will default. If I go back to our templates here, you see. So that's a federal grant template. And you hit the open button. Basically, you can also copy from one template to another template. You see, that's the feature I was trying to show you over here. You see, award. If I go to award template form once more. And if I query a template, hit the find button. You see, you can copy it once more to a new template. So basically, your template can be copied to another template. It reduces your data entry time as well. And you can also copy a template to an award. So that's the advantage of setting up a template. Okay. And then you set up subledger accounting. You see, it's a, it's a very detailed topic and too technical. So I'm not going to cover this subledger accounting uh, side. I'm going to skip this one. Again, it's an optional setup step. Most of this is covered as a part of your general ledger and projects implementation. But you must do it in terms of uh, grants accounting. OK, so it's a it's a required setup, although I have written it as um, optional over there. So, you see subledger accounting over here, and, and then you have to basically use these options to uh, define your subledger accounting options, the default, and your accounting methods, sources, uh, and so on. There are a lot of things that goes into that, and in fact, there is a separate course for subledger accounting that's coming up. So, wherein I could potentially detail all these but as far as the present moment is concerned this is something which is owned by a finance guy who will do all these setups exclusively for subledger accounting and general ledger and then you've got setup accounting for even revenue accounting for revenue and invoice amounts miscellaneous transaction costs and button costs and again all these comes as a part of your subledger accounting and that is i have uh, written it separately uh, so so that you don't forget but these are all has to be done okay And once you're done with that, optionally, you could implement transactional controls um, and extensions or interfaces from external systems. And again, these are optional setup steps. Uh, they are required only when you wish to import or transact data from your external systems to Oracle applications. So I'm going to skip this. And then you have to set up the account generator at two places for setting up the invoice account and project related accounting in purchasing and uh, this is something which is done as a part of your accounting setup so you've got to basically lace with your um, person who is setting up the financial side of uh, your grants accounting setup which includes your general ledger sub ledger accounting and account generator so one person does all these jobs so i'm not gonna go and um, detail into this this is again a very big area so I'm gonna skip this one 
but I suggest if you wish to have more information about this to refer to purchasing guide and uh, subletter accounting um, wherein you would see more information about uh, account generator related topics okay then you've got implement Oracle grants accounting client extensions Oracle has provided certain client extensions the standardized but you can always expand write your own uh, PLS file procedure code out there and then it would potentially um, do the validation to bringing the data from your other systems then set up workflow you can optionally set up the workflow again it's a required setup so as you see while you are defining award if you remember while I was demonstrating the awards in awards management there is an option to use the workflow okay so let's close this you see can you see that workflow enable workflow for budgets um, and likewise there are a number of other workflows so that um, you can potentially customize it basically it's a uh, setup step which is required because um, workflow enables you to customize approval or your custom validations you can copy the standard workflow and customize according to your organization's requirement so hence it is written as workflow and once you customize and test it you can deploy it in Oracle applications database and use it in your grants accounting system then the second last step is set up uh, award distributions and last step is define project status inquiry columns so this is very important project status inquiry you see project status can be viewed from here okay let's see our project status and it's got a number of uh, columns out here so where does it come from it basically comes from a form wherein you define your columns and you also define a formula to calculate these so if I go here to set up you see here you've got project status columns you hit the open button and this is where you define your project status columns and how you go about calculating each of these column values okay you can have your own columns or you can have uh, columns as per your client requirements over here but remember you first define and test it in your uh, development or test instance before you deploy it to your production instance so basically these are all the setup steps that you've got to do as a part of your grants accounting implementation mm -hmm.